for a while, there's been a thing that's been going on in the artist community. You know a guy named Sonic? Well, he's something known as an anthropomorphic hedgehog. Someone looked at a hedgehog and thought of this. Okay, I know a lot more thought went into his design, but this is leading to the next thing that I want to talk about. Taking a very simple and honestly generic object and making a whole character design around it. I was going around the internet trying to figure out what this was called and I landed on Gijinka, which really just means anthropomorphization, or as Google translated into being Moe anthropomorphization, which means adding human traits to an object or something that isn't really human in the first place. And if you look up Gijinka in Google or Pinterest, you may find a lot of examples of different artists drawing human forms of whatever animal or inanimate object they want to moify. I see a lot of people do one for Pokemon that they like, but there's a particular artist that is very skilled. Here's a question for you guys. When you look at this character design, what do you think this is referenced on? The answer is Seaweed. And the artist behind this character design is Reno Tuna. Reno Tuna is a Korean illustrator that is sort of known for the character designs he does based on objects, plants, animals, and honestly whatever he decides to use as a means of inspiration. And I swear he uses the most random and generic items you can find in, well, everyday life, but he's able to make those simple things and absolutely make really in-depth character designs from them. For example, when you look at this, what are you thinking? I'll tell you that I wasn't thinking of Colgate toothpaste, but for some reason knowing that this was the reference for this after the fact, it strangely makes a lot of sense. There are some cases where he does make it very clear what elements he's taking from the reference that he does include in the main character design, like for this one. It's obviously got something to do with dental care due to the toothbrush, the small little tooth, and tubes of toothpaste floating around, which does make it a lot more obvious than the previous Colgate toothpaste example that I've shown before. And for those who haven't guessed yet, this is reference from Listerine mouthwash. And sure, it does say Listerine on a shirt, although it's a bit obfuscated, I feel there needs to be enough links from the original reference to the character design. Like for example this character design based on Powerade and Gatorade in which they'll have the literal name or logo on the design. Or this one based on the Twitch logo in which he just designs the character with a lot of props or accessories that have the Twitch logo. Or this one referencing a worker ant where the character design has a construction hat with two antennas. And I do understand this choice because if you get rid of the antennas on the construction hat, you sort of just have a character in black lifting some grating and I don't think there's enough of a link between this and the ant, but simply adding the antennas brings it all together. But with that being the case, I think his best designs have to be the ones referencing animals. I want to play a game in which you try to guess the animal he's referencing by just looking at the design. Trust me, you can't possibly get them all right. This one is a blue ringed octopus. This one is a Doberman pincher. This one, well this one's a lot more obvious that this is an otter. But for the ones that aren't so obvious, it's so creative to use the core attributes from the animal and make it a component to the human character design. Translating the blue rings on a blue ring octopus to tattoos is pretty damn genius. Or how he gives this character design red hair and a red leather jacket to represent the red torso of a poison dart frog, and the blue jeans and slight blue spray paint on the hand to mirror the blue hands and feet is pretty neat too. My personal favorite character design that he has done has got to be the one in which he uses a black hole as a reference. I mean, when I think of a black hole personified, this is honestly what I think someone would look like. And I also like how this design is very cohesive with the character design based on the Andromeda galaxy. They both seem like to be an all-powerful universe power scaled witches and wizards on how Rina Tuna incorporates a hat into both of their designs. But moving away from the celestial types of character designs, he is also pretty well versed on just simple, normal people. People wearing basic shirts, jeans, school uniforms, or just whatever he wants the characters to wear. Like, look at how he renders this jacket. Knowing how to render very glossy materials in a way that looks realistic takes some serious skill, and that's just it. One thing that I think Reno Tuna absolutely shines in is in rendering. His rendering is so ultra buttery smooth, from the subtle plane shifts on the body, to the folds and creases on the clothes, to the strands of hair. And I'm not all too sure about what brushes he uses, but I honestly think he uses the basic simple hard edge round brush that comes with any basic art program. You can even find some posts of his rendering process like this white button up. Again, the way he renders clothes is so good. I mean, look at this leather jacket with the inside being fur. I, I mean, those little details and how he stipples the fur really sells the texture. You don't need a texture fur brush, you just need to know how to paint those subtle details. And speaking of details, I like the veins he draws on these buff characters he draws. And in fact, I like the majority of the guys he draws are pretty buff and chiseled. I like how he sometimes gives them tattoos and piercings and other accessories. Just in general, his character designs are a testament to his ability to draw different characters in all sorts of arrangements and articles of clothing. 
Also, remember that color wheel art trend that I so did not participate in, but I so should have if I wanted to get something resembling an audience and a fan base? Well, he sorta of did that too, just minus the wheel. He goes from red all the way around the color wheel, ending with white to gray to black. And in each of these designs, he draws all sorts of clothing, and on top of that, he draws people of different ages too, and not just the typical character that might be between the ages of 16 to 21. He also draws this character in green with a thicker build and not the typical buff and or thin build. Again, he draws a lot of characters with a lot of variety in them. Reno Tuna also has these four art tutorial how to draw books that I had bought a while ago but finally showing you guys. Unfortunately, there's no English release, at least to my knowledge, but the pictures do a pretty good enough job in conveying what he's trying to teach. It also sort of functions as an art book because other than these, I actually don't know if he has an art book dedicated to just his work. He does have a Twitter and an Instagram where he shows all of his work as well as a YouTube channel where you can actually see his live painting sessions, which is a really good resource if you really want to study his style a bit further. It looks like he's using Photoshop, but you can honestly follow along with any sort of art program you got like Procreate or Clip Studio. And since he also has a Patreon, you know that I've got to tell you guys to go and support him if you really like his work. Or alternatively, you can even take his Colosso. Is it Colosso or Colosso? Anyway, you could take his art course in which you'll be taught some tips and tricks on with character creation. I usually don't pay to learn how to draw or buy online courses because I literally paid to get into art school already. However, when I do have the funds, I can honestly see myself paying for this course to get some more insight on what his thought process is when coming up with these crazy character designs. Hey guys, I honestly I don't know why this video took so long to make. I actually I do know why, but that's beside the point. Thank you, by the way, for getting this far in the video. Um, a lot of people don't make it to this, um, this far. According to my analytics, um, um, the uh, viewer attention drops off. And understandable, it's the end of the video. You don't need to watch anymore. But for the guys that do make it this far, I just want to say thank you. Um, I've been wanting to talk about this artist for a while, but I just never had a chance to talk about him. And um, now here's my chance, since this is sort of a sub-series from my, from my artist analysis. Um, I'm, I need to try to find a good upload schedule because I don't like taking so long. But um, I'm planning something. I'm brewing something up. Um, I already have an idea for my next video. I'm going to be up unboxing an art book. Um, I'm not going to reveal what it is yet. Um, I'm going to do sneak peeks on my Patreon. So if you want to see like what my next future content will be um get head over to my patreon um thank you guys for all the great things you've been saying um i sort of got a big influx of subscribers from my last video um and i read all your comments and i do read all the good things you say to me even the bad ones i still like those comments too um so keep on um, commenting like the video too and subscribe subscribing is a very cool thing to do um, I have my social media links in the description below. Follow them if you like. Again, these videos are going to be a bit of a side story or a spin-off to my artist analysis videos, so I hope you like them. They're a bit low budget and a bit shorter, but that's because I want to push these out as quick as possible. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.